Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you know why we pulled you over today? Exactly. It's because you're not subscribed. So you better fix that right now. Or we're gonna have to take you in. Uh, can you guys read this correctly? Yeah? Or should we just punch in another, another few times? Let me... There you go. I think this is better, right? With the letters and stuff. I think it is. Anyways. Secrets for Chad Sag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we get into Johnny Ive? That sounds weird. Should we get into this story? Awesome. Uh, Bloomberg argues uh, Apple product design improved uh, since Johnny Ive left. Now, for me, um, if, if you would ask me, I think that this is complete and utter bullshit. Um, but we're going to get into that. A Bloomberg piece uh, today argues that Apple product design has improved since former design chief Johnny Ive left the company. It says that without Steve Jobs' uh, moderating influence, Ive went too far in prioritizing form over function and that this has since been corrected. Okay, so that is, uh, that's an interesting claim to make. When is your MacBook Pro coming? My MacBook Pro coming? <laughs> oh God. Yeah, November. So there you go. Um, that is, it is mental. It is mental. And uh, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. It's all fine. Anyways, uh, let's get back to uh, November Sag. Yeah, it is definitely Sag. I am very Sag about that. Johnny Ive initially stepped back from product design leadership in 2015. The focus on uh, the Apple Park campus before returning uh, to this, uh, to his original role two years later, um, he sub uh, subsequently left the company in 2019. Apple claims that he, uh, that he still works with the company today in a consulting compa capacity. Right off the bat, right? So this this whole thing of um, uh, Johnny uh, doing stuff on his own since that Steve Jobs uh, left, uh, this is not the Black Pearl. This is not, uh, Johnny Ive is not uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Um, there is not just one steering wheel there. Now, obviously, Johnny Ive had a lot of things to say, uh, and, and he, he had a lot of say in how things were going to look and how, how things were going to turn out. Uh, but it doesn't mean that he was just uh, steering Apple into, uh, I don't know, a, 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 a design language that was uh, form over function. Um, Apple has goals, and they, they push certain things, um, for either stuff that they want to do in the in the future or um uh, they they push certain things because they believe in it and it's not just johnny ive saying okay well now we need to drop every single uh, uh function for this form uh obviously he again he has a lot of weight there he could uh, we had a lot of weight there and he had a lot of influence on what was going to happen but to just uh but just blame if you are on that side of the spectrum uh, blame everything on Johnny. That's just, I think that's, it's just idiotic. It's, it's insanity. Um, and the reason for that is if you look at Apple, right? And you would say, you look at the history where they, where they come from and where they are now, you see a sort of line in how they think and how they work. So let's just get back to 2015 when this whole design language that they're still in now uh, ultimately started. This, uh, obviously the Retina uh, MacBook 12 inch. They started with this butterfly keyboard. They started with this USB-C port. They started cutting down on a lot of ports, actually. Uh, I feel like in, was it 2017? They did it on the iPhone. Uh, anyways, there was a lot of cutting there. And that was to get slowly into a world where things are USB-C, things are wireless, things are actually working great wirelessly. Uh, we're now pushing, or they are now pushing for a MagSafe world. Again, uh, something that they kind of dropped, but uh, reinvented and are back in it again. So that started in 2015. Obviously, they started doing a bunch of things after that as well. For example, uh, the Pro Display XDR was something that they started and then brought to the iPad Pro. And now they're bringing it to the MacBook Pro. And this is years of advanced thinking and uh, of thinking in advance for like, what are we going to do with the company? Where are we going? And Journey was there as well. This is stuff that, well, obviously Apple <laughs> 
claims, I would say, well, I, I, I don't know, let's just not get into that. But Apple claims that uh, Johnny is still there, uh, working on, uh, 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 working as a, co a consulting uh, factor in uh, design for Apple. But back then, he was still internally, and this stuff was already being discussed. Obviously, since he left, a lot has changed, but everything initiated, everything that we have now, is initiated in the time that he was still there. You're not gonna tell me that this whole philosophy of this design on where we are now just happened in one year. No, obviously not. You see it trickle down from the Mac Pro, from the iPhone, or maybe that's trickling up, but you see it, it you see the, uh, the MacBook, uh, uh, Retina that brought a lot of the design language that we still have right now. And it's such a wild statement, if you ask me. But anyways, um, November, Sag, that's fucked up. Yeah, it is fucked up. Obviously, we now uh, see governments pushing for a USB-C world, uh, something that Apple has pushed with their MacBooks. They took all the heat and they got all the criticism. But obviously, just adding a... Let's say they would have just pushed out this MacBook Pro uh, that we're going to get now a couple of years ago, like five years ago, nothing would have changed because you still have the other ports and all the other laptops did, did the exact same thing, right? They added a USB-C port or maybe two or maybe three, maybe 500, but adding the port to a bunch of other legacy ports is not going to change the industry because people are just going to use their own cables and maybe use a USB-C cable if it comes to to that but now they were forced to do it it makes so much more sense to now move back to legacy ports because most advanced uh, peripherals most advanced uh, accessories most advanced displays now use USB-C so you have these other ports on the side if you need them um, but the industry had to move forward first to a stage that now everyone wants to live in a world where everything is USB-C. Uh, that wouldn't have happened if we would have just said, well, uh, we would have listened to Bloomberg or Louis Rossman or whatever, and just say, well, we need to have our legacy ports um, because that, that, that wouldn't have changed anything. And that's what we want, change, right? We want, we want innovation. So that's what I'm saying. Apple is looking ahead and saying, well, if we want to live in this world, we're going to have to push for it. And then afterwards, we can always put the legacy ports back. I literally almost never use a dongle anymore because all my peripherals are now USB-C.